Today we're making things go boom with dumb bombs, rockets, and 30mm cannon. Alright, let's talk weapons selection on the armament control panel to our front right. The eight push buttons select various weapon types on the aircraft. These three select our air to ground weaponry cannons and rockets, bombs on the fuselage, and bombs on our wing stations. We can select both wings and fuselage bombs at the same time should you wish, but not rockets or guns in combination with bombs. Above we have the programming options, our fuse selector, inert which turns off the fuse preventing detonation altogether, retard or delay which allows the bomb to penetrate the target briefly before exploding, and instantaneous for an explosion on contact. On top, the bomb slash rocket selector. This doesn't select bombs or rockets like the name might suggest, but rather it selects the wing stations. In selects the inboard wing stations, whilst X selects the outboard wing stations. Setting the switch to the middle 1 plus 2 position will select both the inboard and outboard stations. This selector has no effect with only fuselage bombs selected and having the fuselage bomb selected will always drop regardless of wing station selection when in combination with wing bombs. If you select an invalid combination such as bombs and inboard, but you've got rockets there, you'll be unable to release any weapons. And if you select both stations with rockets and bombs loaded on your wings, only your selected weapon type will release. Below these we have our quantity selector. In salve mode, weapons will release in a continuous salvo from our selected weapon stations for as long as we hold the weapons release button down. If you let go before the salvo is complete, ordnance will remain on board. In CPC, we're set to single. Each press of the button will release a single bomb, or a burst of four rockets per selected pod. And finally we've got the firing fuel dipper switch, which is best left in the on M position. When the cannon is fired, our engines will automatically decrease the RPM to reduce the risk of our gun's exhaust choking the engine. In the off position, the engine's RPM will remain as set by our throttle. Now for the fun part. On our left, select the master arm to the middle armed position. With bombs selected, you simply press the bombs, rockets, missiles and sight recorder switch to release our bombs. Alternatively, with cannons and rockets selected, the trigger will fire our cannon, whilst the bombs, rockets, missiles and sight recorder switch will fire our rockets. Although the targeting reticle is present in all sight modes, it's caged at 10 degrees down in approach mode, so we'll use normal HUD sight mode instead. This gives us our degrees of dive, and it also allows us to reconfigure the reticle depression setting. To assist with visually tracking our target, you can raise the seat up and down with the control, or we can adjust the camera with the right shift, right control and number pad 8 or 2 to move the camera up and down. Now here comes the tricky part. We do not have any computer assistance, just the gyro reticule to aim with. So you either have to eyeball it and guess where your weapons will land, or we can take the technical approach making use of math and weapons release tables, which look something like this. They require you to fly a very specific speed and dive angle to achieve success. The method is very similar for both bombs and direct fire weapons, and you'll find weapon release tables included in the manual. Let's get set up. We can set our reticule depression by rotating the small dial on the right of the counter, so that it matches that of our release table. The CE does not feature a radio altimeter, so we've got to configure our barometric altimeter to give us height over target. By default, our aircraft is set up to display the altitude above mean sea level, known as QNH. We want it to read the height above our target, so we can release our weapons at the correct moment, by using QFE. So we've got to reconfigure our altimeter pressure setting directly on the dial. There's a couple methods for this. If we're lucky, the target area pressure setting will be provided in our mission briefing. Otherwise, buckle up, because we're going to have to do some maths. Alright, so we know the QNH, or altitude above mean sea level. It's the default setting on our aircraft. And we know that roughly for every 30 feet of altitude increase, the pressure changes by 1 millibar. Therefore, we can offset our current setting by the number of millibars required to reach the altitude of our target to give us height over target. So we take the reading of our target's elevation from the F10 map. 
and divide it by 30 to give the millibars of change. Now we'll offset our barometer setting by that amount, subtracting it from the millibar setting we already have by rotating the dial. Our altimeter will now display our altitude above the target. Effectively, it'll read zero at the target's ground level. This gives us an accurate means to measure our height at which we'll be releasing our bombs above our target. Remember that you have the standby barometric altimeter to the right, which we'll leave as is, which is very useful to reference should we need the altitude above sea level again. Now it's as simple as flying our aircraft accurately at the correct airspeed and dive angle, so we place our target reticle over the impact area as we reach our release altitude and release our bombs, as defined in the table. This is a skill that requires practice and you will never be pinpoint accurate, making it preferable to drop salvos of bombs covering a wider area. The higher your release altitude and range, the more precise you're going to need to be with your flying to score an accurate hit. As you practice, you're going to develop a feel for seat of the pants corrections such as overspeed, corrected by aiming short, or deliberately diving faster in order to reposition so that you can maintain a shallower dive for the remainder of your target run. Don't forget to make use of the air brakes and plan your airspeed ahead of the dive. If you're looking to fly by the book, the air brakes are not authorised for use in combination with a bomb's release. And lastly, aim your salvos at the start of your target area, not the centre, so you get good coverage. All of this will take time to practice and learn, so take your time, use the included training missions, or create your own personal target range with unlimited weapons and fuel to practice in. I hope you've enjoyed, and take care.